Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube, covering Knowledge 15, brought to you by ServiceNow. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Dave Vellante and our next guest is Jason Moyhan, president of ServiceNow's business unit for Cloud Sherpas, a business partner, um, top of the heap for these guys. Congratulations. Thank you very Welcome much. Welcome to theCUBE. Appreciate it. Uh, before we get started, talk about Cloud Sherpas and what you guys do, obviously integrations huge, but what key areas and then we want to have this whole conversation? Sure, so uh, Cloud Sherpas is a, is a cloud services brokerage, that's a Gartner term. We provide cloud advisory and technology services for four, three key platforms. We're a partner with Salesforce, Platinum on three continents, we're the top three in the world. We also a, have a line of business supporting uh, Google for Work, we're Google's partner of the year, 2012, 2013, 2014, largest Google partner in the world. Of course, I'm responsible for our ServiceNow practice. Uh, we were one of the first partners in the ecosystem, we're one of the few partners that are global. Uh, Platinum, our, our, excuse me, uh, uh, master services partner in the in the ServiceNow space, and uh, very large presence, uh, not only in the training practices, we had over 28 uh, uh, trainers here helping to, to do the pre-conference training on behalf of, of ServiceNow, and you know, over 3,000 clients to date um, on the ServiceNow platform. So you're in the middle of the digital transformation. We certainly are. So you've got Salesforce, Google, ServiceNow, three really top game-changing, products, platforms, cloud. <laughs> yep. uh, what's your take on the cloud? I mean, what are some of the challenges? I mean, obviously cloud is what everyone's seeing. Where are we in the cloud evolution? Are people still hesitant? Are we in the third inning, first inning? Why would you peg where we're at in terms of going into this modern era of yeah, IT? So, you know, I, my take on the cloud is it's the only take right now. There are very few things that you can do in technology that it give you the extensibility or the scalability of a cloud platform. Uh, really reduce that time to value once you get those clouds in place. Uh, what we find is there's very few customers we talk to today that don't have some sort of cloud application. In fact, Dave, I think last year we talked a bit about you know the, the proliferation of cloud being a, a bit of a challenge. In some cases, you can see cust some customers with you know 30 to 35 different cloud applications. And of course, you know, clearly, if you've gone that deep in cloud, there's some overlap. You're going to su start sub-optimizing. Uh, we're focused on three core platforms. I obviously is most uh, concerned with the, the ServiceNow platform. Uh, what we're finding is, you know, we're really just in the honeymoon of extending the platform past IT. Uh, I think our consumers that we see, they're they're well beyond understanding that you know ServiceNow is an extremely capable IT service management tool. And now we're in the space of exploring, you know, those adjacent spaces and 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 looking at the power of the single source of record and the workflow and automation engine of ServiceNow. Talk about the, the uh, convergence of the consumer consumerization trend with the, the reconstruction of the back ends of IT mm -hmm. and businesses, which is computer systems, right? So you got the convergence all coming in. User and user experiences, iPhone, App Store, Meets, <laughs> plumbing, <laughs> all that stuff. It's an integration potentially nightmare. It's a challenge. But the yep. opportunity, if you crack the code, is pretty significant. But share your th thoughts and observations on, on that dynamic. What are you seeing as success formulas uh, for folks that want to integrate fast, modernize, to have that you know, feel of a consumer company, but yet still scale and have all the requirements? Yeah, we see very few companies that aren't interested in some level of a case of integration in their operation. Um, we're well past this notion of, you know, you go to product X for, for one activity, product Y for another activity. Um, our consumer behaviors, if you look at it, that bridge between hardware and the service experience or the user experience, you know, Apple's so famous for and many others, you know, those bridges have been crossed from a consumer perspective. And what we're seeing is tools like ServiceNow being that chasm or, or being that bridge uh, really in, in the corporate, you know, back office. Uh, we spend a good deal of our time working with IT departments because it's it's not uncommon. In fact, it's most common for ServiceNow to be implemented as an IT tool first. And so there's this education uh, process you have to go through that, that starts to reveal what the opportunities are to expand the platform. Uh, the best way to always do that is through case examples, other users' experiences. Uh, we've got a lot of really interesting you know, use cases that we're seeing today. I mean, um, last year we spoke about Einstein Noah, 137% increase in foodborne illness in stores, right? Not because they changed their the, the way they did business, because they automated that workflow on ServiceNow. 
Uh, we're working with a large brewer and, and looking to modernize some of their brewery systems and those forward-looking maintenance tasks. And you know, it goes on and on and on. Uh, folks in IT don't tend to understand or, or don't tend to think of what they're doing as some kind of, kind of chasm, you know, crossing, you know, <laughs> major issue in, in strategy. They're just trying to solve a problem, and now they've got a tool that really enables them to do that quickly. So, Jason, we've talked before about how you guys made some early bets with with Salesforce, but really Google and ServiceNow. You know, it wasn't clear several years ago that this was going to be the type of business that it's become. So talk about the momentum in that business, what's driving that, and then I want to talk about the extension into the business side mm -hmm. beyond IT. So the momentum is, is the market. The market was really ready for something else, particularly in that IT space, right? And once you get IT and you know, necessity is the mother of invention, you've got this wonderful cloud platform you know that that you can extend and use for other things, and and you know your IT uh, your IT folks tend to be pretty crafty, right? So they're gonna they're gonna find those opportunities. They're gonna look for solutions. They're trying to delight their clients, and the way they're gonna do that is through the cloud platform. You know the market was just ready for something different. ServiceNow is that 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 thing that was different. Uh, you can certainly see the the way they've gobbled up the market in the ITSM space. ITOM's next. Service management uh, also you know getting very significant at this point. So. You know, if you really look at modernizing that IT, the department of IT, um, and, and the users that, that touch IT across a corporation, there's, there's no better place to be than right where we are with ServiceNow. And then two years ago at Knowledge 13, it was sort of Fred Luddy sort of gave us a glimpse of you know, creating apps on the platform, um, big announcements. Now this week, you guys are part of that, mm -hmm. contributing to that. Why don't you talk about the store, what you guys are doing there. Yeah, so uh, just today, in fact, ServiceNow uh, released the ServiceNow store. Um, we have been fortunate to be part of the, the initial pilot group of, of uh, partners out there. We have two apps that we've released on the store today. We have a legal application. We can talk about what that is and what that does. And we also have a security incident management application. And you know, that's just really going to be our start there. Uh, we have uh, plans you know, through the rest of the year to add additional applications into that store. Uh, ServiceNow, from a platform perspective, is caught up to the point where you can now abusify your IP so you can protect your own capital from you know, a coding pers perspective. And it's, it's a, enabling that to really propel us into a space where we can make those applications that we're, today we're building one off for clients, we can make them you know, something that, that is built once and repeated many times. So let's, let's unpack those. Let's start with the, the legal app. What is it? What does it do? What problems does it solve? Yeah, so we've, uh, we've implemented a legal application um, that was the foundation of this. It's six different legal organizations uh, uh, you know, since we've been part of ServiceNow. And we're really addressing three different aspects of what's important in a legal operation. First and foremost, there's a workflow between lawyers and document processors, people that do research requests and things of that nature. And they needed a way to track that. Very often it's done by email and you know, there are no KPIs or service level commitments or ability to really report around that or understand who's being responsive and who's not being responsive and what information is needed in a transparent way. So we've addressed that workflow, that, uh, that lawyer to research request or document processor. Uh, the, the second piece of the application is uh, legal firms have very vast digital libraries now and they have to manage their subscriptions to those digital libraries. They also have to manage the information requests for those digital libraries. And so we've got those built in as well. And then last, for all legal firms, it's extremely important that they have good understanding of billable time. And so many organizations are using tools like Kronos or others and we've been able to actually integrate ServiceNow with those tools to not only ensure that you've got a good understanding of the billable hours for the lawyers, but more importantly that as you go into those shared services and legal organizations, you've got a good ability to abstract what their billable hours are and get those back to the appropriate project. So out of, for instance, Kronos. Exactly. Okay, so where does Kronos leave off and where does ServiceNow pick up? Any request into that system? Or can you describe that in a little bit more detail? Yeah, so it's, a, it's usually used and in this application, it's used in a way to kind of give the legal departments transparency on where those billable hours are coming from. You know, anybody can log into a Kronos system and pull a record, but it's not often associated to a task or not often associated to the specific activity. You might have an hour of billable time, but that hour of billable time may be made up of four or five unique tasks. And some legal organizations, customers want to get a little bit more transparency. This is the way they can do that. You're actually associated down to a task level. I know we want transparency, John, when we get our bill from lawyers, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then, you know, the workflow between lawyers and, and document processors, what, 
people might say, well, can't I just use a ticketing system to do that? And what's different here? Uh, you could use a ticketing system to do it. And in fact, you know, incident management is a foundation of, of any good transaction of work between groups. You know? and so that sounds a lot like a ticketing uh, type right. of application. The, the benefit of ServiceNow is that, of course, it has that. But in addition to that, you have the ability to get reporting. You have the ability to automate the workflow. You can uh, draw security and draw roles and, and groups a little differently. And so you have the ability to target those things that are really useful for those individuals and not distract them with everything else. And, and you've got integration, potentially, if you, if you have a single system of record with other processes within your organization. You got it. All right, what about the security app? Let's unpack that a little bit. You know, we've heard ServiceNow talking about security apps. Mm -hmm. what, what's your security app? So it's, uh, I really look at it as a precursor of, uh, of really this notion of how are you going to really comprehensively manage security incidents. If you think about what security teams do today, particularly with threats, new virus, new code, those types of things, there are a lot of different channels where they could pick up that information. In fact, um, many security organizations follow certain handles on Twitter because they might get the information first. Their are emails coming from vendors, their emails coming from other organizations, uh, there are websites that get updated and other types of places where you've got to be able to integrate with these many different sources of records, parse that information down to what's relevant for you, and then you have to structure some workflow around that so you can manage it. So what our application does is it creates the ability for you to create unique strings and query those different repositories of information looking for those unique strings, right? Threat virus A, for example. And it will then create automatically those tickets. So you don't have to have a person parsing out emails, parsing out websites, parsing out Twitter information, things of that nature. The system's going to do it automatically for you. Going to create that in a, in a ServiceNow record. Um, going to give you the taxonomy of where that threat information came from and give you the ability to tie that back into your IT operation. Okay, so now talk about the business model for these apps. How you charge for them? Is it a, is it a subscription? What you go to market on them? So it's do you a, wrap services around them? Yeah, so it's different by application. Um, you know, this is obviously a very early market for us, so we're still kind of fine tuning our approach, but ServiceNow has given us a lot of flexibility there. So we have the ability to offer uh, app by app pricing, we have the ability to offer subscription pricing, uh, we also have the ability to do kind of a free model, if you will, where you get a lighter version for one cost, and you can elevate privileges for another, um, and of course we always have the ability to turn that into a services engagement and charge nothing for the application. So, you know, we're still working through that as we speak. To, the store was announced today, so we're going to have a lot to learn there. Um, but we've also been piloting um, kind of how consumers uh, share and use uh, service management information through ServiceNow share sites. So, for the last few years, ServiceNow's had share up and running developers and, and people on the ServiceNow platform can go download bits of codes and things like that and, and make that useful for them. Uh, we've got over 2,000 downloads on the share site, so we think we have a good understanding of what the consumers would buy in a marketplace. And of course, that's why we've positioned legal and security incident as our first applications. Um, you mentioned in the quote here, um, your customers are wanting to automate more across their enterprises. Uh, with innovative business applications. That's kind of the sound bite. Um, you mentioned some of the workflow stuff with your clients. What innovative applications um, are you seeing? Out there? Give some other examples of, of, ex of applications that are innovative, that you guys have worked on, that ServiceNow um, is, is a big part of. Well, um, I, and I, I could give you a long list, but I'll give you some that I just think are, think are interesting. The brewery yeah. uh, application I think is quite interesting. So we've got uh, a number of uh, retail franchise types of restaurant organizations that we work with. And, IPA? And it's important for them, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to tell you. Uh, it's important for them to be able to uh, request beverages and types of beverages and get them to the appropriate place at the appropriate time. So we actually have a request catalog that uh, fulfills that. Um, a lot in the facility space right now, this notion of you know what you need to change a light bulb or what you need to shovel snow in the parking lot or what you might need yeah. to do some different types of things, get a bid, for example, for services to be provided, very similar to the types of workflows in IT. These are we'll workflows that there. if you go back a decade ago would cost what to automate? I mean, in terms of cost order magnitude, yeah, significantly you know, it, larger, would you? It's an apples to oranges comparison. I mean, I, I, I can't even, you know, this would be a unique application. And, and, you know, years ago, you would start that conversation by saying, okay, I'm, we're going to need a server, and we're going to need to put yeah. that in a data center, and we're going to need to make sure it's secure, and then we're going to need to build it on some sort of database and build something on Developers top of that. Developers are higher. And, and, you know, you know exactly. So, <laughs> and then if you had any money left over, you could actually execute it. And then you them. could actually <laughs> build it. And so we don't even start there, right? Because yeah. as customers have implemented service now, we're down to, okay, what is it that you need, really need? What do you want the application to do? Security requirements are met. You know, roles and privileges are already established. Your architectural You're guidance is already there. You're in the functional, real, meat of the 
the conversation. Exactly, exactly. And so you're start you're not starting from a technology discussion. You're starting from you know a business reason somebody needs some technology, which is just foundationally different. And what's the big big aha with the store announcement? What, well, how would you summarize that to folks out there? What's the uh, what's the big uh, the top line news on that? You know, what I'm excited about is uh, I think, uh, and, and it's what makes Knowledge Conference such a great event, is you end up talking to clients and you end up hearing so many different ways that they're using ServiceNow. And so I, I think what we'll find the store really becomes an amalgamation of that. You see many different types of technologies. And of course, we'll have the ability to see, well, what's really important? What's really moving in the ecosystem? What matters to clients? Um, and they'll have a way to do it that doesn't necessarily always sound like a services engagement, which I think will be empowering for them. So, so I wonder if you could talk about the sort of the role of a company like yours as an application developer and you know service provider relative to what ServiceNow is going to be doing. Obviously, you know Fred Luddy wrote the first application yeah. for ServiceNow. They've, they've introduced the store. So, what's your take on that on that mix? Do you? I mean, ServiceNow talks that they're going to really open up the ecosystem and and. What gives you confidence that that's going to be the case, that there's going to be plenty of white space? What are your, what's your take as a well, partner? Well, there's, there's no question there's white space. I mean, we've been in this ecosystem since uh, 2007, and it's been nothing but white space, right? <laughs> so, um, you know, there's, there's not a single anyone that I think could fill the void of, of what the cut clients are looking to do in the platform out there. And I like to think of, you know, Fred Luddy built a really capable IT service management solution, and people kind of forgot that he actually also built the canvas that that solution's drawn on. And, you know, the canvas is blank at this point now. We were able to just, you know, kind of put the technology aside and say, what matters, what's important, how do you want to address that? And, you know, there are a lot of businesses and a lot of customers and a lot of workflows within those businesses and customers. So it's a great opportunity for us to and, get in those spaces. And you guys are, remain a high touch service provider. Absolutely. You're not becoming a software company overnight, but you're increasing the software content as a means of driving efficiency, value add for your customers, is, is that it's right? A, it's a good question, so are we turning into an app shop, right? And the answer is no, but we are building some apps. Well, why are we doing that? You know, foundationally, I believe that, you know, we could go out there and I could speculate on what the next best app is and go try to partner with somebody that's got domain experience in X, Y, or Z, how to build a bread, bread basket, whatever it is, and then try to turn that into an application and hope somebody buys it. We've actually gone the other way. We're actually listening to customer needs and looking at those services engagements to say, okay, where's the content that really needs to be repeatable? And that repeatable content is a good base or a foundation for you're an application. You're not doing it for a venture development opportunity, no. you're doing it for a service delivery aspect. Exactly. Which then turns it into potentially a portfolio service. Efficiency, customer satisfaction, stickiness, all so the you're good a believer things, that SAS, differentiation. So you're a believer SaaS turn, turns everything upside down. It really does. Yeah. Okay, great, so the cloud mobile social revolution is upon us. You guys are in the thick of the digital transformation. So what about those companies that were the apples and oranges examples from 10 years ago? The big sex accounting firms, which are now our big consulting firms, they're out there, you know, they're stuck on their ways. What's their challenges and how do you guys extend your distance and expertise lead against them? So I look at a big part of how we've added value in the ecosystem because we, we're relative to a KPMG or an Accenture, we're a relatively small firm, a thousand people globally. So why, why are we so good at this, right? Why are we competitive? Why would Forrester put us in the leader's quadrant in this space or, or leader's wave in this space? Why would they do that? Uh, it's because we're able to get to a customer and meet them where they are. You know, we're, we're going to be very agile. We're not trying to roll into some you know, business transformation. We're actually transforming business one workflow at a time, you know, in the trenches where it really gets done. And that leads us to the next opportunity, the next opportunity. Gives you track record, some trust, you can exactly. execute. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time, stopping by, and we'll see you tomorrow yep. as well on the Cube. Um, getting all the action here live, uh, nonstop fireworks of action here on the Cube, all day, three days, wall-to-wall -wall coverage. I'm John Furrier, Dave Velez. We'll be right back after the short break uh, with the segment from CloudSurf is great. Great insight. Thanks so much, Jason, for coming on on the Cube. We'll be right back after the short break.